Welcome to the GGBC deck. Not you, you're always welcome. I'm always I'm already you're here. always here. We're doing something a bit different today. So ahead of uh the big fight in Rehad, Rehab, where are we going, Deck? Riyadh. Riyadh. Uh this coming Friday we're previewing Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou. So we're gonna break down both fights, starting with Francis Ngannou. <laughs> Hello, Deck. Good morning, George. Tuesday. I don't think I've ever seen you on a Tuesday, ever. This is yeah, novel, it is, isn't it? Yeah, that's a song, isn't it? We're still, no, we're on yeah, we're still David David David, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's Tuesday. I'm oh, great. Yeah. I am so great. I am mm. so great. We are looking ahead to a huge week of boxing, huge week of podcasting, really, to be honest. Yeah, that's what it's, it's all about, really. That's all everyone. anyone ever cares about is the podcast. Um, and today, I think we should discuss Francis Ngannou. Um, why what's he doing he's this boxing week? this week he's boxing Friday oh, not Saturday Friday he's fighting Anthony Joshua Anthony or Anthony I've yeah he's he's, um, he's good big, big guy in Garnu mm. big guy okay they, they should, should fight. fight yeah and they are <laughs> which is handy um, yeah. so they're out in Saudi rehab mm-hmm. um what have they got a name for this? It's called Game Over, or is it called No Knockout Chaos? Knockout Chaos, yes. So yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's in it's in Riyadh, the uh, the latest the latest in the series of Saudi Arabian Nights, George, which you kicked off. Of course, we should always mention that you were the first one person to defend the world title in yep. Saudi. Uh, there's no world title on the line here, though, but there is plenty at stake, isn't there, George? There is more than plenty at stake, isn't there? You know, there's there's oh, for. <laughs> Both guys, you know, a win or a loss or a great performance or an entertaining fight still opens the door for many, many opportunities uh, there to come. Uh, Ngannou, with his very first outing as a professional boxer, almost shocked the world and almost got a win over uh, the heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury, didn't he, last time out? And that was in Saudi. Was that in the same place? Same place, the... Kingdom Arena, which was that purpose-built place, the uh, Turkey Al Al Sheikh basically said, "We want this place. We need this place done by October." And in September, there was nothing there. And uh, one of my colleagues spoke to a local um, labourer builder out there who worked on it, and he said, "When they got the brief, they were like, this is this is a six-month job. There's no chance this is done by October.'" But what they asked for, they get, and it was up, and it was it was there. That was the one. That one was the one where they had the undercard outdoors. You remember? And then they came inside yeah. for the main event, and they did all the opening ceremony in that. These days, like in for the December twenty third card, and for this one, it's all just in the same that big arena. It's a it's a beauty, to be fair. I mean, totally purpose built and um, nice aircon and whatnot. And a, you know, the oh, ring doesn't rise out of the floor anymore. I wonder though. if Turkey Al oh, Sheikh can come and do these roadworks down here in West London because. Uh, <laughs> If he can get stuff done at a rapid time, these are gonna this is this is no. a three week job. It's been going on about three years now, so um, we're struggling. <laughs> There's one thing, one thing that the Saudis are not good at. I actually know they're amazing at. Probably the best at is traffic. The traffic in Riyadh is absolutely beyond belief. So don't let them don't let them get their hands on West London. You think it's bad now? It's nothing compared to Riyadh. I'll tell you that. But Francis Ngannou, who's not going to have to be driving around, luckily, he'll be in like the backs of cars and stuff. Let's have a little look about a look at Francis Ngannou. He's what is he? Thirty-seven. What do we know? He's a thirty-seven-year-old former. Well, not former. He is a UFC or MMA icon. He was like the undisputed champion at heavyweight and stuff. I'm not a UFC fan, MMA fan. Neither are you, George. A lot of our listeners will be. They'll probably know more about his background in UFC. But what we were told about him. When this, when the Fury fight got made, is that he's the biggest puncher in world ever. He's got the world record for it. He can punch harder than a Ford Escort and all this sort of stuff. Not that Ford Escort's got arms, but apparently he delivers with the same force. And he delivered with some force against Fury in the f- what round was that? Yeah, third round. We call it him? third. Yeah, I think it was the third round. Uh, and nearly pulled off the almighty upset to end all upsets. He didn't get the decision in the end. He was grinning at the end. Well, not, he wasn't gutted at the end because he knew that he'd changed everything just by that performance. Uh, and I interviewed him before um, the main press conference for the Joshua fight and said, well, how could you be happy? You've just been robbed, basically. That's what people were saying. And he said, it's just bonus for me that I'm even here. Like He's like, my family are ringside. 
I'm here. I've, you know, he didn't actually say I've earned all this money, but I'm sure he's thinking that. Um, and now as a result of his performance, because he did so well, there's a clamour for him to fight other big heavyweights and that has landed on Anthony yeah. Joshua. Um, Anthony Joshua, a man who, when asked to, des to describe or a word association on Francis Ngannou, his first word was inspiration. That's what Joshua thinks of Francis Ngannou because of his backstory and whatnot. And it is a incredible backstory, George, Francis Ngannou's. Yeah, it is. So he is born in Cameroon. Correct me if yeah. I'm wrong along the way, Dex. I know you... Yeah, you, you've uh, got the a little bit more details, but worked in. Uh, he was mining, wasn't he, from the age of ten, mm. uh, and then somehow at some point ended up in Paris, and he was sparring with Carlos Takam. So that's where sort of little alarm bells I didn't know about before are sort of coming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so this big guy, who apparently always wanted to box but just had no opportunity to, um, ends up in the cage or mixed martial arts or but just because probably that was the only gym that he could he could find to get a workout and get a few quid from. Um, no one wanted to back him uh, in boxing, and that kind of happens a lot. Um, but if he's spot... Especially in France. Yeah. Is it, yeah? It's not, like there's, it's not like there's loads of opportunities in France. He would have had a better chance here, but he's gone to France, and it's like the opportunity was in MMA. Yeah. But yeah. And... Yeah, he he, break, he breaks through, doesn't he? he breaks through in 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 MMA, and he sort of then he has to park his boxing dream. Um, and I'll, as I say, I'm not up to date with like the UFC career, but I know he's a huge star now in in UFC. Um, and because of that, he's got his opportunity for this exhibition fight for this sort of supposed <laughs> to be a bit of a joke fight against Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's thinking, yeah, sure, pay me all this money, I'll, I'll fight the, I'll fight the cage fighter. That's no problem. But he has arrived. He's there, and he uh, almost gets a decision. He almost beat, in many eyes, the number one rated heavyweight in the world. Do you think he should have? I think I can't remember at the time. I remember thinking, oh, I should be scoring these rounds. But before. <laughs> yeah, halfway yeah. through I wasn't scoring him and, I was, and it was only then I thought oh my god maybe I should have been scoring these rounds um, and when he dropped Fury you're like it's not like Fury was boxing well and just gets caught with a funny shot and goes down and then he shakes it off and he gets back to it you're like oh he's, he's having a bit of a stinker here he's been dropped now he's gonna be I can't see him going from nothing to full speed Fury you can't do that it's, it's incredibly hard so it's um yeah I don't I I mean at the end it felt like Ngannou had won I didn't think you'd get a decision but you know when you collectively the feel of a fight you think oh, I feel like blue corners won or red corners won it's not yeah. always the case if you go back and you score the rounds there was a lot of close there could have been a lot of close rounds in in fights where they it's actually gone to the other guy but how did you think were you was you there for that one deck. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was ringside for that. I remember thinking, I thought Fury's won. Um, I think, I'm trying to think back. I, but I do remember vividly as everyone, you know, because it had crossed over a bit and there were non-boxing fans watching. And then they're just so surprised at what he's doing in Garnu um, that they, you know, they think he's ran away with it. When in reality, it's not, it wasn't quite like that. But it, what he did do a lot better than a lot of people thought. I'm trying to think what I did, what I did. Maybe I had it a draw or something. Sorry. But anyway, it was a close fight. But, and Gar yeah, it was a draw. But Ngarnu, um it was 10 rounder as well, by the way. Um, and Garnu said he felt like he'd won anyway. And just to put a bit of meat on the bones of, of that backstory. So when he turned up, so he boxed when he was younger in camera. Like his big dream was boxing. And he was a Mike Tyson fanatic. Um, and he boxed, he told us he boxed a couple of times as an amateur in the, in his twenties in Cameroon, but he, his fights were hard to come by and whatnot. And then he ended up, he goes to prison for a bit and then he goes to pa he ends up in Paris. And like you said, he starts boxing, he just goes to a gym and because he's good at fighting, boxing first and foremost, but fighting and he's a big lump, he gets these opportunities in MMA and they're paid opportunities. That's the crucial thing because he's skint. Um, he's working on the door. Um, he's doing stuff like that just to try and make a few quid. Um, he, he told me the first first time he ever got paid was for a competition 
and he got 20, he got 120 euro notes. We got two grand euros and he ran home because he was like, I really can't let, get this nicked off me. Not that anyone's going to try him, I'm <laughs> sure. Steal. And he, st- <laughs> yeah, and he stuffed it under, stuffed it under his mattress. Like that's where he's come from. And then because he, because basically he was so good, it was almost like he couldn't stop doing MMA because it was paying the bills. He didn't want to do it. His dream was still boxing, but then before he knows it, He's making a name for himself and he's winning these tournaments and he's getting a few grand here and there. And then, as as not luck would have it, but as the way of the world is, UFC got hold of him, offered him a contract. And I remember saying, like, was that a big moment for you? Were you, like, over the moon? And he was a bit like, not really, because boxing was what I wanted to do still. And then he goes into a, a, a UFC and he becomes the, the you know, the, the champion, the predator and all this sort of stuff. So that's like only over the last 10 years that that's happened to mm. him. But always, he's always had this boxing dream. So that's where, and me, before I spoke to him, I didn't know any of this. I just thought he was like a Johnny come lately, a bit of a Conor McGregor. Although to be fair to Conor McGregor, he used to box as well. But like, he always wanted to box. This was his dream. This was his his plan. It wasn't just like, oh yeah, I'll take the money. I, you know, I'll try and, you know, I'm a wrestler, but I'm sure I could take a few shots. He wanted to box. He sparred a lot with Carlos Takam. And that is why Carlos Takam was on the undercard in in that Riyadh show. Remember, who did he box? Bacoli, was it? Anyway, it was in, insistent, insisted on by Francis Ngannou that Carlos Takam, his old friend and his old sparring partner from Paris, would be on that undercard. Um, so that's where he's come from. So then you sort of start to think, Joshua was right when he calls him an inspiration. And then you start to think, this is a guy who's used to people kneeing him, kicking him, elbowing him, trying to choke him, trying to break his arms. And then he finds himself in a boxing ring with someone with two gloves on, big gloves as well, not those little hand things they wear in in MMA. And he's like, I can handle Mm. this. This is not that bad. And that's what it looked like in the Fury fight. He was like, this is chill. He's like, I can handle the few, few shots. Fury tried to knock him out in the first second, then he tries to land a big right hand and he can't. So my question to you, George, is can Joshua knock this man mm. out? Because he's, he's not like he's uh, he gets hurt regularly. Do you think Joshua, the new and improved, or Joshua 3.0, can put a dent in him, can stop him? Well, it's called chaos knockout sort of victory. Isn't it? No, knockout, knockout chaos. chaos, right? So <laughs> Chaos knockout victory. So we, got, we, need, we need a knockout. We need a knockout. Yeah, true, yeah. And, yeah. you know, I can imagine, I've never took a little whack off of Carlos Takam, but I remember him walking in the gym at the Hay Gym and thinking, wow, where did you find this guy? Um, <laughs> like, he, <laughs> he, he was enormous. So, you know, if he's... If, if Ngannou's been sparring with Takam and, and taking punches off him in, in sparring, then you're like, well, maybe he's, his chin's okay, he's good. You know, he looks like he's got a, a good chin. So I'm not sure if Joshua would even tr- attempt to try and knock him out or just think that he could. Ooh. But I hope he does. I hope he tries to stick it on him. And um, we have sort of a an all-action sort of fight rather than sort of a bit of a chess match, boxing match. Yeah, because surely that's not how Ngannou wins this nah, fight, George. You know, like, how, how does Ngannou well, go about trying to win I'd this fight? I'd imagine Ngannou's going for quality over quantity. He's a big guy, so he's not looking for to land hundreds of shots. Um, but when he does land, he wants to make it count and then maybe have a, a good finish, like an instinct. Hopefully he's got an instinctive good finish. I took one thing that I did think about Deck was I thought, when I originally thought he'd done no boxing and then done one camp and, and showed up for Fury, I was thinking... I wonder what the difference will be after two camps. You know, will he be Very good twice point. as good, right? Twice as settled. Mm. Or now on the flip side, if he had some decent boxing fundamentals because he's been sparring with Takam, he's always wanted to box. He, what are we going to see the same? Like the same, he is what he is essentially. Because I can imagine if I'd done 10 weeks of MMA um, and then I did 10 more weeks of MMA, I'm going to be twice as good because I've never done... UFC. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. So because he hasn't got like newbie gains, yeah. but he's not getting the beginner like rocket like that because he's always been boxing. Is he going to have that really fast, fast improvement? Mm. But here's a question though, George, with that in mind, he's just done 10 rounds with Tyson Fury, obviously very skilled. Wasn't the best Tyson Fury we've ever seen. How much are you learning just from that experience? Surely it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I think it must be an awful lot. Um, even Tyson Fury on on a bad day, he's still gonna try and be pulling out the 
the Trinks mm. and still big, big yeah, bloke big as well. Yeah, big bloke who could navigate himself around a ring. And that's what he did. He navigated himself through the ring with, with experience um, to get through to that final bell. Yeah, he's, he would have learned a lot, wouldn't he, Dick? He would have learned a lot with that through that mm. experience. You know, plus that, you know, but he's got big fight experience in terms of performing on the big stage. And you're right, it's a, t- it's a mindset. And maybe he just, there is no fear factor because the gloves are bigger and because he doesn't have to worry about someone grabbing his leg and trying to submit him and stuff like that because maybe that's just not what he's you know he's capable of you know getting on with it I don't don't know I haven't seen enough UFC but if he's like oh I've only got to worry about punches this is okay this is easy enough I can see Mm. that I can can understand that stuff Um, what what is Nganu thinking in terms of what is he expecting from Anthony Joshua like it's that's what always makes these sort of fights fascinating because you never know what to expect. Uh, and if you're a fighter preparing, then you don't know what to expect, do you? You know. Yeah, do, do you think... I asked him this and he sort of didn't give a big answer, but I sort of said, but do you think it's an easier fight than Tyson Fury? You know, because Tyson Fury, we know what he's like. He's unorthodox, he's big, he's undefeated, blah, blah, blah. And we know what Joshua's like. And it was like, Does, is this an easier proposition? He sort of sat on the fence a bit. He said, Cause I don't know yet. But do you think it is an easier fight for Francis and Garnu? Anthony Joshua, or do you think it's a harder fight than Tyson Fury? Mm. Uh, you know, if, 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 if he hadn't boxed either of them and you're going to say which one's a harder fight, you're going to say, well, surely it's got to be Fury because he's he, he would be harder mm. to, to land on, to nail. And if if you are sort of a inexperienced boxer who's got a big punch, you're thinking, who's, he gonna, who's got a better chance of landing it on? It's Joshua rather than, than Fury. Um, so I'd say... Joshua probably would would be would be easier on paper, but who knows? Yeah, if you're if you're trying to if you if you're ba- if you're his manager and you're like, what, which one of these have we got a better chance of beating? You, surely back in maybe before October you would have said Anthony Joshua, but maybe mm. not now. Well, another thing you mentioned on the the camp and the you know he's had a second boxing camp now. How much better will he be? His last fight in the UFC, so his last sort of organized fight was January 2022. So then. Between then and last October, that was what eighteen months mm. longer than that. Before and in between, so like, not only is he preparing for a new sport, but also he's he's been out of the ring. He's been out of camp for like over eighteen months, and now he's just had that camp and he's had a fight. And what are we on six months on, he's had another camp, and now he's. So I wonder how much better he's going to be because of that. Like, how much ring rust was there? How much? Just getting back in the zone was there, and and will he be that much better now because of that? What yeah, do you reckon? I mean that's a, that's a really fair point. And, and he's thirty seven years old, and he might just be mm. that exception to the rule where you know they can keep on going. He started fighting late, so he might not have that sort of miles on the clock. But when you start creeping into those ages, you know, pushing forty, you're thinking the body's not operating like it would have when you was twenty five. But a back to back camp will certainly serve him really well. So that's that's definitely but but Joshua the same, I suppose. He's been busier busier yeah. than ever since his four fights in twelve months, is it? And you know, there or thereabouts. So um he's been busy, he's been in the gym. Uh, but yeah, I think you're right, Dak. Okay, last one. Um we asked this question last time before the Fury fight and it was what would happen if Francis Ngarno wins this fight? Like what's ahead of him? In the end, it didn't matter that he won or lost, really, because it opened doors for him. But do you think... Well, what do you think happens now? If Francis Ngannou wins this fight, what is there coming for him? Do you think there's a chance, knowing what we do about the Saudis now, that if he beats Anthony Joshua, he will get the winner of Fury and Usyk? Yeah, I mean... Like, do you think it's that? Do you think the stakes are that high for him? I think, I think if he beats Anthony Joshua... I think he, he he's obviously still there. Whether they go rematch, I think it might be rematch or Wilder before it's Fury Usyk. Mm, maybe, Just yeah. because Fury Usyk fight has got to take place in May, um, they've, they've got, got a rematch, rematch, haven't they? That's so you yeah. know. Um, but I think yeah, if um, if Ngannou beats beats uh, Joshua, that's got rematch written all over it. Even if he's a a great fight. And Joshua wins, they might do it again. Um, Joshua, no doubt, just wants to be busy, take the biggest fights. And if it's not a wilder fight, 
then it's just another another fighter, isn't it? Whereas Ngannou, Ngannou's now in that top that top tier of names, isn't he? In terms of the bracket, you know, yeah, if he's he there was four, and now I feel like there's five in terms of marketability for 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 the names. Yes, so, mad. you know, yeah. does 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 uh does Joshua want to fight Zhang or Parker again or Hergovic or Francis Ngannou? Like, it's just it's different, isn't it? It's a crossover. So even even if each of everyone then fights with equally as hard as each other, the Ngannou one goes to the top because of the story. So I mm. think he's ranked with the WBC now as well. Yep, we we all he's are. Ngannou. It's great, isn't it? Yes, you're you still are. Um, but if he uh, if he wins, if he beats Joshua, like they could quite easily stick him right up there and make it mandatory or put him, you know, in a final eliminator yeah. or something like that. Um, it's quite it's quite crazy, really. But I, I, I feel do you like think, sick. Okay. So do you feel? I feel once we've had this Fury Usyk fight, right, and then, and then whoever wins, there's one champion with all the belts. Then, then the belts are mm-hmm. going to fragment straight away because there's you, you can't you can't have like who's then they're going to have a rematch then who's going to fight the winner and no the belts are going to go yeah. they're going to go the IBF's going definitely straight away IBF's going um, um is it the WBO or the WBA who like Warren's Warren's pressuring with with Zhang and 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 Joyce and that's W that's WBO, WBO. yeah Zhang and Parker fighting for the interim WBO <sighs> that's, title that's, gonna, the that's gonna go yeah you say Hergovic is after the IBF um, so I think I think they'll just they'll split W and W and, and Tyson's had the WBC for ages without he had that mandatory I yeah. think against um, uh, it would have been Dillian White wasn't it who's, Dillian White who's was back it? on the scene apparently he's cleared of all charges yeah clear to clear to fight uh, yeah um, okay do you think because I can't picture myself I can't picture this is the last one George short one I can't picture Francis Ngannou winning on points I can't see him winning clearly enough to win on points I think it'd be if it if it goes like that he'll Joshua will get the decision do you think he can win on points or do you think he has to knock Joshua out hmm. I mean he almost beat Fury on points Almost, almost uh, yeah, almost, almost. And in some people's eyes, he, he did. I think he can. I think he can beat. He, he could beat. He could beat Joshua on points. He can. He can stop Joshua, and likewise, same for Joshua. So, so it's, it's. We'll have to wait and see, Jack. That's what, Ed, what do you think? We will. We'll have to wait and see, George. That's the beauty of boxing, isn't it? We've got to find out on Friday. I'm George Groves. He's Deck, and if you haven't heard, the George Groves Boxing Club is going live, and tickets are on sale right now. Nice, our first ever live event, George. Are we going to start off on a nice low-key venue? Absolutely not, no. We are taking on the world-famous Shepherd's Bush Empire, and it is Frotch Groves free. It is 10 years, Deck, since mine and Frotch's fight at Webley Stadium. So I've gone and got Mr. Frotch to come down all the way down to the Shepherd's Bush Empire and we're going to tussle it out again in podcast form. Nice, you could get the bus there again. Should we brainstorm a few other ideas? So it's going to be uh, the feature and it will oh. be the best feature we've ever done. You yeah. Maybe you and Cole could have a duel. We'll be crowdsourcing. For the, for the most Mike part. Skinner's coming, he's crowd surfing. 50 Cent's going to buy the first three rows anyway. I don't think we can promise this. Frux Groves free, a decade in the making. Tickets are on sale now. Listen to the George Groves Boxing Club podcast for all the details. We're, we're, we're changing it up this week and this week we are doing our build up to this week's action in uh, Rehad, Saudi Arabia, Anthony Joshua v Francis Ngannou. Is it is it Ngannou v Joshua or Joshua v Ngannou? Joshua is the A side, Joshua's on the left. So I think yeah. it's Joshua and Ngannou, surely. I saw a clip of them sparring and they both knock each other out. Have you mm. seen that? They both hit the deck, it's, it's mad, incredible. It's mad that they get access to sparring footage these days. Yeah. And it's mad that they're sparring each other in the camp, but that's what we saw. They both knocked each other out. Yeah, um, they did. That was um, 
You never that, was, know. that must must have been in rehab. Yeah. No, it was actually in Barcelona. It was in Barcelona that that whole that whole um, escapade. Um, I'm from Barcelona. And you know, neither of them for Barcelona. But you know, it's like you know Joe Joyce before the Jalei Zhang fight, the first one. They mocked him up like Terminator with like the Terminator eye, like the bionic eye. Yeah. And then in the fight, Zhang stops him on cuts on that eye. He ends up looking like the Terminator. It was like foreboding. And I'm just wondering, can we get a price from the bookmakers on the, the double knockout? Because they've, they've, it's almost like they've told the universe now. They've gone, this is what's going to happen. They've knocked each other out with the same shot. Um, maybe it's just going to happen in, in real life now. Yeah. You don't see him much these days. I mean, you don't see him much ever, but maybe this is no, the one. I saw a double knockdown once in uh, Rocky Two, and it was... Um... <laughs> It's, it was heart in your mouth. It was incredible. I don't mm. know what the bookmakers were. If anyone even had a price on that that no. night. But I'm going to have a bet on it. Because stranger things have happened. If I can find a price, and I'm sure someone will offer them. But they've done it now. They know, they've been through. They know the mechanics of it. Um, so the double knockout is on the table. But, George, it's Wednesday. Yesterday, Monday, we had a little, how about that? It's classic. Tuesday, mm. yesterday, we did the Francis and Garnu sort of deeper look into him and how he wins the fight so it's only right now that we have a look at Anthony Joshua um, at one point Great Britain's leading light in this sport arguably the world's outside of Canelo the world's biggest attraction once yep. upon a time kind of not like that anymore um, but he's worked his way back into contention do you think he's still the biggest draw we've got do you think he's still our our golden boy what 12 years on from London Olympics yeah, so it's a that's a it's an interesting point, um, because it was sort of like it wasn't even up for debate, was it? Like no. five years ago, should we say? He was um, the don. He was, yeah, but he had, like, yeah, he was, um, but he still is. I think that crossover star, and it might just be he will always be that now because of the sort of the legacy that he's got and the work that was done with him to promote him and and build it, build his brand. Um, and heavyweights, you know, every fight always is a headline, isn't it? And Deck, yeah. you you know more than me. Like, you, why why fighters get in the papers? You know, he's he's one who you're always gonna um, get in the papers. He's one who we will do a pod week about, mm. uh, as opposed to a pod. And then obviously. Tyson Fury is in that category as well. And then outside the two heavyweights in Britain, is there anyone else in Britain? No. I wouldn't say so. Not right no, now. It's no. even it's even um it's even waned for him though, because there was a time when when I used to work for an agency, if you get stuff, you'd phone up newspapers, magazines, outlets, anyone, and say, I've got this bit from Joshua, I've got this bit from someone, George Groves, and this is what he said, do you want it? And most of the time with boxing they'll be like, Yeah, yeah. If it's Joshua, they're like anything. Anything's news. If he farts, it's like, yeah, give me a, two pages. Like it's, it, but it's a big fart. It's a big old fart. He's a big boy. But um, that that was then. But it sort of waned a lot. And that's mad how it really works. That once you start losing, particularly after the Ruiz fight when he got knocked out, and then he's now seen not by people inside the sport who understand anything, but he's sort of seen as like this fraud a bit. And it's like, oh, it was all a hype job. In America, that's what they say. Oh, it's, it's, it's all come undone. And then the sort of, that's how the story went with him. And then it's like, oh, but now he's gun shy and now he's gone weird and, and all this sort of stuff. So it's been a kind of crazy journey for him. Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't know, George, from looking in from the outside, do you feel like, any of that is true or do you, do you think he has changed over the years or do you think that's just a narrative and actually behind closed doors he's he's sort of much the same because you know what it's like because people said the same about you they're like oh he's changed here and this has happened but in reality you're probably much the same you're doing the same sort of thing every every day every week yeah i mean you do change throughout your career because the experiences mold you and, and do change you um at times that the, the boxing industry could can taint you and and uh you know you have your ups and downs your highs and lows and as well as your experiences when you you know when you win when you lose uh they they can make you sort of change change your mind a little bit uh and make change your your approach and your style and i i'd be shocked if he if he hasn't changed he, he definitely has changed you know he's 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 experienced a lot he's had the 
the dizzying heights of success and then, you know, terrible lows as well after he's been beat. He's changed camps before, so he's been in different environments and he's had to rebuild. And uh, the rebuilding is building back different, you know, building back different. So he's certainly uh, a different fighter now to who he was pre-Klitschko, say, or yeah. definitely pre-Ruiz. Um, and he's been in, in, the, in the, the public's eye at the very front, especially of the boxing... Um, fraternities and so he's had to take the brunt of you know this criticisms at times where people have said oh he's finished or he was a hype job or he was a... and I, that's not that's not true it's not true at all he's a, he's a he's a very good fighter um what what he what he had was a uh, magnificent um journey to the top and it wasn't steeped with hurdles like as in trials and tribulations mm. problems should we say and he got there at lightning speed you know and it felt like every door was opening for him so that's why people think well he didn't have to work hard for it he didn't he got he got it, the lucky it, draw with the world got, title as well in the end didn't luck, he lucky draw given to him but that's boxing yeah and mm. you have to capitalize on those opportunities and he did he, he did time and time again you know up until i mean when he's unbeaten it's like well you're gonna fight such and such for the heavyweight title he's still got to go out there and do the job yeah you know do do the job, mm. um, and but that's 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 what that's not his fault, and he's he's gone out there and done it. Um, I think credit now is that at his that this stage of his career, after the big nights that he's been involved in, he still. I mean, the last the last out and he boxed really well, so he yeah. must have got himself in shape, knuckled down. You know, he's into his thirties now. Um, he's been boxing at the top for ten. Not not ten years, but yeah, like eight mm. years or something. He's been at the top, so it's a long time with a few losses to overcome, and 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 at times he has looked like he's sort of lost the plot deck, don't you yeah. think? You know the things yeah. he said, it's bizarre, um, but he's but he's still going, he's still going strong. Mm. So I don't don't think I don't think that's a fair a, a fair reflection of of Anthony Joshua. No. He's, a, he's a he's a good fighter, and he's not he's not a hype job, is he? You know you can't. <sighs> You can't gonna, have been as far along the the road as he has if he was purely a hype job. Hype jobs get do get found out, you know they yeah. do get found out. But um, but at the same time, he's done things smart. You know, is it? He still is. He still is the biggest draw. I think is he still a bigger draw than Tyson Fury? Like, I see, think, out, outside of the boxing circles, he is, isn't he? Because he's the one who got the the endorsements. He's the one who, if if both guys have a, have a good fight. Who's getting invited on, you know, Jonathan Ross or Yeah. Um, he still he it, still has that luster, that sort of um commercial value, even in defeat. But that did change when he started losing. Tyson Fury said some outrageous things in the past and he's been sort of it's been flagged as such. And then so he has a slightly uneasy relationship with certain sort of sections of the media, I guess, and he would probably agree with that. Joshua's never had that. It's always been pretty steady for him. Um, but yeah, I think it's close. I, I don't think there's much in it in terms of like the man on the street who knows who and who likes who. Everyone's got an opinion on both of them. But um, I think Joshua, many people thought he was on his way out, whereas Fury's kind of on his way to the biggest fight of his life in Alexander Usyk. But I think Joshua's kind of back now. Just for those who sort of might have forgotten or don't know about Joshua's career... It was 2016 when he won that world title against Charles Martin. Charles Martin undefeated at the time. But remember that he got that shot. Or Martin got the belt because Fury, when he beat Klitschko and sort of broke that division open, then he went missing. He had the problems with his mental health and drugs and drink. And then he relinquished the belt. So then the IBF became vacant. He Charles Martin boxed uh, Glaskov, I believe it was, back in the day. Um, Glaskov's knee went so then Martin sort of won by default and then Joshua was mandated to fight Charles Martin so Joshua never had to go and box Klitschko for the or a champion in that sense Charles Martin was the champion but not one who'd really earned it if, if all that makes sense so that was 2016 then Joshua has those defences Dominic Brazil Eric Molina two solid defences chins them both Seventh round, third round. It's like, okay, he's arrived. He's the world champion. Then he has the epic with Vladimir Klitschko. And that was sort of like his arrival moment for the people who were saying, well, he never had to win the belt properly. He goes and beats Klitschko, stops him, one of the best fights you'll ever see at heavyweight, at Wembley. 
then, so Wembley Stadium, this is 2017, April. So what's that? Seven years ago. That was the first of one, two, three, four, four stadium fights because then he boxes Takam and Parker in Cardiff. Then he boxes Povetkin back at Wembley. Four times outdoors selling 80,000 tickets is absolutely insane. It just shows like how big he was at that point. Then disaster strikes, goes to New York, Madison Square Garden, American debut, gets knocked out or stopped by Andy Ruiz in just the most stunning thing you'll ever see at that point. One of the biggest, nowadays, now we don't look at it as such, but when it happened, it was one of the biggest shocks in heavyweight history. Still, you could say it is. Then he beats Ruiz on points. Then he def- uh, he beats Pulev. He's got, the, he's got the belts back. He's defended them. And then Usyk turns up in the division, beats him twice in a row. And everyone's like, oh, fuck. He has the breakdown after the second fight where he does the mad monologue at the end and he starts crying in the press conference and everyone thinks, right, that's the end of Joshua. But, He's rebuilt since then. In the last 12 months, he's outpointed Jermaine Franklin in his first fight back after Usyk. He stopped Hellenius in the seventh round with big, like, Polak's right hand. Not at his best for the rest of the fight, but he got the stoppage. And then Otto Wallin, who many people, including me, had suggested might give him a tough fight. He's absolutely pieced him up. Um, and the new, the new relationship with Ben Davison sort of paying dividends already done a number on him and now people are like the old AJ is back um Joshua says AJ's not back you lot are back and there is a sort of sense of that is that people are back on the back on the bandwagon people love big heavyweights knocking people out um and that leads us to here George so Mm. that's a mad old eight years that he's had to enjoy it's going to change anyone isn't it yeah no definitely 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 um it's (sighs) I mean, I I think up until the, the 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 problem they had was they did they kind of underestimated Usyk, like the the Joshua team mm. underestimated Usyk, who um, I think they just thought size matters, big big beats small, and even though he's you know he's got he's Olympic champion, so is Joshua, even though he's he's sort of unified the cruiserweight division you know, Joshua unified the heavyweight they, under, they underestimated they took him as a mandatory um, just to try and get rid of him to keep hold of the belt so that they could somehow try and make this Fury fight um, but Usyk's obviously he's a, he's, a, he's a handful because if you look at the rest of the fighters that, that Joshua's fought um, like Klitschko very very experienced very good fighter one of the best heavyweights there's ever been but was coming off a quite a long layoff, if I remember, and he'd had back problems or other injuries. Mm. Fury I mean, had it was him already. Fury had beaten him already, and he and like he was a far cry from the the Klitschko we thought David Hay, who showed up and just, just looked invincible. Yeah, you know. Um, so Parker, great fighter, but you know, not quite at that size or level. You know, he's switched it on recently against Wilder, but. Yeah, I think I think that was a little bit of a, sh- a shock to the system for for Joshua by the sounds of it, and that's when you thought, oh, he's going to spiral out out there. He had that weird monologue he said at the end of the fight. I didn't know he cried in a press conference after, and then when he came back, it's like there was that element with fighters. You think, oh, you're fighting now because you don't know nothing else because you identify as the fighter. You've got enough money to quit now. You've got enough memories and and uh accomplishments to to leave the sport and probably think well you know i've, I've done my piece i've, I've had my my bit because um the franklin fight he didn't look like that great but that happens after after a loss like first one back and then franklin's decent as well gotta say yeah he is but he's not deck is he come on he's not <laughs> no he's but not he wasn't this... like he wasn't turning up to get he wasn't a knockover job like no 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 he wasn't he wasn't a what's his name uh demore Demore. Yeah, it wasn't a Mark Demore. Like he could, they could have taken an easier fight. He just done twelve rounds with Dylan White and done well. Many people, as he won that fight, it wasn't like, yeah, he was yeah. he was okay. And I think when you look back on the run, you're like, okay, yeah, he, he, he bit one on points. He wasn't his best, but he still won comfy. Yeah, it's good comeback fight. Yeah, yeah, um, great knockout against um, the Finnish lad. Uh, he finished him right off. <laughs> He was out, wasn't he? And then Hellenius. he, and then Hellenius, he had a Hellenius of a time that night. Didn't he? Heinous. <laughs> and then he tested positive on Hellenius anus. as well. Yeah, he uh, he had some deposits in his Hellenius. Um, <laughs> <Fuck's sake. laughs> 
<laughs> he was gone. Anyway, Valin, everyone's got to sit up and, and watch. So, mm. I mean, I, could, I get what Joshua was saying, and I think that's a great line that he used. He goes, no, I'm not back. You guys are mm. back, right? But the truth is, no, no, you are. You are back. I don't like yeah. it when people say, just the old AJ. I think that's mm. what he's probably hitting at. To get back to the old AJ. It's such a fucking shit line. Yeah, it's he, a shit he, line. He, he but, explained... No, sorry, carry on. I'll, I'll say after. But, but, the, but the point is that, like, you was kind of flat and not really dangerous until you just iced... Hellenius, you know what I mean? But so, so I know that sort of sounds like a contradiction, but it's not. And you wasn't dangerous against um, uh, Franklin. You didn't look like a well beater. But against Valin, you're like, oh, bloody hell. Put him in with, put that guy in with Usyk. Let's see mm. if Usyk can keep him off for 12 rounds. Put that People guy in with Fury. Mm. Let's see if he don't hit the floor like like he did against um, Ngannou. So... Yeah, he is. There are differences, isn't there, Dick? What, what, what's your uh, well, Joshua outtake intake? Well, he. So we said this to him when we spoke to him at the press conference. It was like, "Is the old AJ back?" And he explained it beautifully. And this is why he explained why the alliance with Ben Davison works very well. Is he said the old AJ? What people say when they say the old AJ, they're like, "He should walk him down, be more aggressive, just throw more punches," which is what he wasn't doing against Usyk, and basically is what people say which is true and fair. He said that the old AJ, so not the old AJ, but the old days, he would walk people down and knock them out because they weren't very good. Because going through the levels, they're just not up to it. And he was even saying that he's in the fight and he can just learn on the job. He's like, right, this guy does this, I'm going to throw a right hand and knock him out. But then as soon as you start boxing better people, even go and watch the Povetkin fight, which is a great finish, early on he has a lot of trouble because he's like, fuck, He's, he's a much better opponent. He needs longer to work him out. And if it takes longer to work him out, he can sustain more damage, right? So the old AJ used to knock out people that weren't on his level. Happy days. If you put him in with those people now, you'd see the old AJ because he'd walk him down and knock him out. So with, with Ben Davison, what Ben Davison is doing is what Joshua says. Ben Davison and Lee Wiley, who are very into video analysis and all that sort of stuff and prep in that sense, which is not something that his previous coaches were doing as says AJ, is they're doing the downloading of the data as much as you might hate that phrase, but that's what Joshua says. They're doing the prep for him. They're doing the prerequisite work so that when he goes in the ring, he's not learning on the job in the first two, three, four rounds. He knows what he's got to do, like against Otto Wallen. He goes and does it. So that's why the old AJ's back because he's not having to deal with better people because his training team are giving him the information and he's absorbing it. During the interview, he gets his phone out and he's, slide, he's sliding through his notes app. He's made notes on Francis Ngannou. He's made notes on all the heavyweights because he's watched them. And it says, he didn't let us see what he'd said. But they're extensive notes that he's sat down and written himself about these people. Basically telling him what he needs to do and what he needs to not do. So he's not doing this on the job anymore. He's not doing it in the first round or the second. He's doing it in real time. And that's what he means by the old AJ. I mm. think he's well... In, within his right to be saying fuck you to people after the adulation that he got when he was at his best and he was winning easy and then the way it dropped off and the way he started getting criticism when he started losing I'd, I'd probably be the same to be honest um, yeah but now- just, 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 just just to come back from that just for yeah. listeners right um, and I don't know what Joshua was doing before right but surely Derek James has watched the Usyk, watched Usyk box gone to the gym with Joshua and said he's very good at this this and this and you need to do this and this and this well, no, that's essentially was... what a game plan is whether you all sit down and watch the tapes together or not that's another thing you know maybe some coaches don't bother doing that so maybe some coaches don't want to do that with their fighters maybe their fighters don't actually want to watch too much boxing but it's not a, not a coach I've ever worked with amateur or pro who hasn't watched tape and come up with a game plan of how to how to beat someone like I get it what he's saying he's learning on the job in the ring against these nobodies and you still always have to have a think and a feel once you're in there you know you'll be, yeah, you're you're yeah. in there Completely, and you're like yeah. right you're 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 computing what this guy does well what he doesn't and then they're giving you but then your corner's giving you information at the end of the round as well well he said so, he said he they wasn't really and so this is all ju- what Joshua said and again this is just all one sided from him and his side but. He was with Rob McCracken for the first Usyk fight. Um, and then they split with him. And then he brought in 
um, Robert Garcia for the second Usyk fight, who sort of was with Bam Rodriguez and stuff. He didn't seem like, based on what they both said since, it didn't sound like a harmonious camp. They brought in Garcia and he wasn't doing that sort of prep. Um, and then he goes with uh, Derek James and he has to go to America and stuff and it all seems a bit strange. It obviously doesn't go so well. And then he's landed with Ben Davison, who's only around the corner and who he says provides him with that. Now, with all that in mind, George, now they've got Francis Ngannou in front of them, who they they know from one fight as a boxer, the, the Tyson Fury fight. People will say, just go in there, walk him down, knock him out. He's not used to that sort of pressure. He didn't get it against Tyson Fury. He won't be able to handle it. Joshua wins early because of that. Do you think that's what he needs to do? Do you think his best route of victory is the quote unquote old AJ if that if that exists. No, 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 no. Well the old AJ is like <laughs> show up with no game plan and just learn the job and hope yeah, for yeah. the best. Yeah. And it don't work, right? <laughs> mm. So no Ben Davison ain't gonna do that, is he? Ben Davison's um gonna do his utmost. He's he's that character. He will go through the archives. There's only one fight to watch, but he'll figure out he's probably watching a lot of uh, UFC at this point. Yeah. Trying to work out how how he, what, how, what's his reactions like when he, when he has, if he has ever been clipped or anything like this? But I think when you're when you're of that size that these guys are, if you can be an aggressive uh, counterpuncher, so if you can press off the front foot and force your opponent to punch and then punch after them, that's always going to be their their strongest suit. So. He doesn't need to just maraud forward and, and let his hands go as such. He can do it with caution, but he does it against Valen where he's pressing for once on mm. that front foot. Hard jabs to the chest and the body and to the head. Loads of variety. Uh, that's really what you want to be doing with, with Ngannou. And you want you, you want to encourage him to punch. You want to, you want to encourage mm. Ngannou to punch. Uh, you think if, if he could... You still got to back your fitness over ten rounds uh, as a, as a championship level. He's been a championship level fighter for eight years now, like and Ngannou hasn't been boxing mm. ten yeah, so threes he, for eight years. He, so yeah, you've got, got to back that, yourself yeah. there. You got to you got to make it uncomfortable for him. So yeah, and the best way and the easiest way to to make it um uh, uncomfortable for someone is to press them, force them to punch back, punch them in the face. <laughs> yeah, you can make do it uncomfortable too. for him. Well, mm. yeah, you know, it's easy. I mean, maybe easier said than done. Mm. You know, he's an I'm underrated not... counterpuncher, I think, Joshua. I think he is. If you look back at his career, he's like, look at the Pulev fight and stuff. He's really good at countering off the jab, for instance, coming back with right hands over the top and stuff. Like, mm. very underrated in that sense. So I think you're absolutely spot on, bang on the money, because is Ngannou going to be used to that? Because MMA people don't do it, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, but it, yeah. it's different, isn't it? It's different. Mm. You've got to worry about someone grabbing your leg or someone fucking doing something else whatever they do you know, eye gouge I think they elbow that's illegal is that illegal you can mm. bite them in the nuts can't you I think um, can you can hope not oh no wait that's, uh, that's something else no um, <laughs> you got to worry about everything no mm. uh, yeah I think I mean I want to see a great fight but also I would love to see the intricacies of the difference between someone who's been boxing for oh, a long, yeah. long time at top level and someone who hasn't, you know, someone who hasn't, it. where you're just like, okay, he's setting him up, he's setting these. It come sometimes you got to be patient. It's sometimes it, you got to wait for it to land. But you're thinking, right, let's see uh, an intelligent, measured performance. And I think with Joshua, who is very. Um, I can imagine him being the sort of athlete who's very adaptable and very e easy to teach, very teachable. And Ben Davidson probably he can only really work with people who have that element of of teacher and being able to teach him, you know, because he he likes to talk his point and get it across. So I can imagine him having a solid a solid plan. Mm. Um, and I can imagine Ben Davidson's got Joshua's ear, so Joshua is willing to follow his. Follows his instructions. Uh, I want to see a, a really good, tasty, aggressive boxing match. You know, uh, I don't want to see Joshua go in there and, and just try and win on points and, and live to fight again. I don't think that's what they've signed up for. You know, it, they'll knock be signed out chaos. up to go, knock out chaos. Yeah. Mm. Is there any chaos? Is there any chaos bonuses? Because usually we hear about a mm. knockout bonus, but is there a chaos bonus? 
if you if you sort of generate some chaos. No, I don't think it's written in the thing. Um, yeah. I, I think it won't suit Joshua if that fight descends into chaos, to be honest, but it will if he gets a knockout. Um, two quick questions then to finish on closing. If he wins, and he wins in style, um, you know, say boxes well and takes him out, what's next then? Are we thinking... Wilder. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Wilder. You reckon? Why not? What's Wilder, Wilder doing though? Wilder will have it. Yeah, Wilder. I'm sure Wilder will actually have a fight before then. But um, yeah, uh, that's a shout. I, that's a total curveball because we know that he'll probably be in line for the IBF when that fragments off. And he, he's, his whole thing is he wants to win a belt. But the Wilder fight is going to make more money. Um, and he'll look at Wilder now and he'll be like, this guy is a spent force based on what he did against Parker. He's like, I will knock him out after yeah. all these years. Yeah, that's a shout. Okay, I like it. So would you would you go Wilder rather than like Hergovic for the vacant IBF or whoever it is? They ain't I don't think it'll be vacant IBF. I think they if they could make if they're going through the year now rather than through the season out in Saudi, and let's be honest, these fights are only gonna happen in, in Saudi with a Saudi Saudi dollar. Um let's go let's go Wilder next. Uh okay. Well, Wilder's in the gym all the time, but he don't pull the trigger. You know, he don't pull the trigger in the fight, and he don't pull the trigger to make the fight. He's been inactive for so long. I'm sure if they said, "Look, Wilder, he's got to be 37 now, is he?" Mm. So we saying to him, "You ain't got long left, mate. Do you want to earn some money?" I thought after the Joshua mm. fight, especially just after by the Parker. Yeah. So is it? He's got no choice now. He's finally you, like gonna well, do yeah. it. Yeah. Are you worrying about your legacy? Like you know, it's some fighters. They have a rivalry and they're like, oh, I can't lose to that guy. That would be the worst thing in history. But I don't think them to have that sort of... They're not two Brits. Like, they're from the other side. And when they were supposed to be boxing each other all them years ago, you know, it has gone. And this could be redemption for Wilder. I think Wilder would take it, you know, because Wilder's in that, in that space now where the harshness of boxing, people are going... One minute they're talking about him being the hardest punch in heavyweight in history and one of the ones the greatest of all time. And now they're like, well, who did he beat? Yeah, now they're like, he's he's always been shit. Eddie Hearn's like that. He's like, yeah. I've never rated him. Never rated him. He mm. was never good. He got he, 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 If he lands the right hand, great, but that's it. Who's he beat? He was losing to that guy until he won the knockout. He mm. losing to that guy until he got the knockout. Put him in with Parker. Parker bashed him up. Couldn't mm. fucking do anything. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh. I think he'd still look at Joshua and he'll go, oh, "I'll have that." Oh, like, yeah. he's like, he'll be like, because he's mad, isn't he? Wilder's mental as well. Like, oh, no disrespect to him. Like, he's off his nut. He think, you know, he doesn't think the same as thank, thank you, doctor. Yep. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that was the official explanation. But uh, yeah, so he he will look at Joshua and be like, "What? What? That figure against Parker? I don't care about that." Yeah, I'll have, I'll still knock him out. Here's a question oh. though, George. Last one. Oh wait! Oh go on! I was going to give you one last one. Yeah, you go, I'll give you one first. If Joshua loses, does he have to retire? No, no. If Still he loses, fight Wilder. If he loses, fight Wilder <laughs> or Ngannou again. Or if Ngannou fights Wilder, um, he can then just go back to legit boxing and try and fight Hergovic for a final eliminator. Mm-hmm. Um, how does uh, Deck? I want to ask you: mm-hmm. Does Josh? If does Joshua win? And if he does, how does he do it? I think he wins. I think he'll turn up with a plan. And I think that's so important to him. If you look at the first Usyk fight, he's talking to Clifton Mitchell during the ring announcements, basically saying, what shall I do with this bloke? Like, I don't think that was a good plan. Usyk and Kanganu, two different kettles of fish. No disrespect to him. Neither of them are fish or kettles, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I think he'll turn up with a plan. He'll, be, he'll know exactly what he has to do, like a robot. And he'll go out and he'll execute it. Um, and I think he'll keep it tight for a couple of rounds, land, keep it long. Um, any opportunity, he'll throw the right hand, but I'm thinking just jabs, head, body, variation with the lead hand, not doing much, not giving anything away. Then he'll look for a little opening. I think he takes him out like mid rounds. And I, again, I'm underrating and I'm maybe disrespecting Ngannou's durability because he's obviously super tough. But mm. there's... In boxing, you only have to be buzzed and hurt for 10 seconds and then the fight is over. I think you get him at some point enough mm-hmm. in enough of a state to do that. Um, and if he doesn't, if he doesn't quite get that breakthrough, I think he'll win like, he'll, he'll win all but sort of two or three rounds. I think it'll be one of those fights. But I see him getting an opportunity and opening a window and taking it. 
what odds do you reckon we can get on win via knock uh, via knockout via uppercut? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably. I don't know. Maybe it would be a special. Maybe we'll speak to some. Yeah, we'll get. We'll speak to the bookmakers. We'll Any, get the double knockout. and We'll get the uppercut. What do you just see? Yeah, Garnu just I want, coming I want forward. Dub, I want double knockout, and then win via knock uh, via uppercut, and then if we can double it up as well, so it's like a double uppercut, <laughs> double uppercut. knockout. <laughs> so they both land it and they both go down. Sounds like Street Fighter. Sounds like knockout chaos. That is fucking hell. It's Tiger. Been- <laughs> uh, no yeah uppercut I mean that's obviously Joshua's money punch a lot of the time especially if you've got a smaller guy I mean a guy who's not much smaller but he's just coming forward like that yeah look you can see it and then there'll be a that's the beautiful shot if someone keeps pressuring you the uppercut and then obviously probably be the left hook that knocks him out though it'd be a Klitschko situation no I reckon um, straight uppercut and then they, they, bo- they both go back and then so uh, don't forget, okay, well, don't forget, you if, you, if, you, if you land your uppercut as he lands his uppercut, it's then hard to get the hook off. Well, so both you... of you end up going up in the air like that. And you know, let's see, this is the sort of insight you get at the George Groves Boxing Club. So it's a double uppercut knockout. Um, you heard it here first. I mean, if this actually happens, they'll clip this up. This will go, fuck, this will be go down in history. The double uppercut knockout, George Groves has called it. Um, any bookmakers out there, We'll take whatever price you got. We'll take it. Get in touch on the socials, uh, yep. GG Boxing Club. Um, but yeah, okay. So I think Joshua wins. You think double knockout via uppercut. Um, I can't wait for it, George. I can't believe I'm saying that. Like if you told me that a year ago, that you'd be that I'd be buzzing about a Joshua and Garnu fight. But I think even even if it's not a good fight, even if Garnu's not quite makes it as competitive as we sort of expect it to. It, it's good it'd be great for Joshua and it's great for me as a bloody British journalist that Joshua is flying again because we need it yeah, it'd be well, disaster if he loses in that sense I've got to say to be honest with you yeah well you put your eggs all in one basket so it's <laughs> you've only got yourselves to blame okay true true no right. Sam Eggington's not on the undercard um, why is he not on the undercard get him in get Ego in he's Egg probably ready to go in. yeah he's up for it he's um, do you indeed. know what you do if you get a nasty cut right crack an egg right and then do you know that thin like film membrane yeah. that goes separates the shell from the egg you got to somehow prise that off you put that over the cut and it will heal with no stitches cheers doctor i'll tell you it was uh Eamon O'Kane Do- Eamon Dr. O'Kane ta- Eamon O'Kane oh, really? taught me that and Eamon O'Kane used it time and time again he was a mm. bit of a bit of a slasher so shout out Eamon O'Kane. Shout out Eamon O'Kane. Um, O'Kane, well, that's enough of that, George. That's the uh, Fury and Garnu preview pods done. Now all that's left to do is for the two big boys to weigh in. Um, luckily, they ain't got to make any weight. Um, some of the undercard do. It's actually the biggest undercard they've done ever in Saudi. It's a beast. Um, we ain't got time. We, we're not in any position to go through it all. But that's a hell of a show. Um, chat and shit the top gets it, zanged chat shit gets zanged he will bang anybody and he's going to bang Joseph Parker <laughs> uh, there's, fu- there's loads of them on that undercard um, yeah and that's a Friday night Friday night fights can't go wrong um, so we'll be back uh, we'll have a chat about that show me next week yeah Nick to the Isaac Ball he's on let's have a chat next no, week about yeah, it, Nick, Nick to the Isaac Ball yeah we could get a new British world champion at featherweight Nick Ball in an amazing fight against Ray Vargas could steal the show. Can't wait. What a night, George. Um, and who knows, is it the end of Joshua or is it the, the start of the next phase and final phase of his career? Who knows? Game over. <laughs> See you, yeah. Nick. See you, Knockout Chaos. Bye. <laughs>